Okay, so we are doing potpourri here. Polyon, you're going to start us out? Oh, uh, okay. Um, I see, I see, I see, I see, I see, I see, and, uh, Yep, so definitely a, a vascular proliferation. Uh, and yes. we're <coughs> at high power. Angiosarcoma. Looks kind of like an angiosarcoma. When you look at all of these little papillary fronds, they all have a. There we go, that's better. They all have a little collagen or, in some case, fibrin-like core to all these papillary structures. Anyone want to jump in? IPH. So, IPH, intravascular papillary endothelial hyperplasia of Masan. I see. <coughs> so, very good. But I'm doing this wrong, right? Because you're supposed to be teams. Be yeah. Yes. So anyone, yes. anyone out. from either team yes. can shout it out, right? Yep. Okay. Yeah. But that is one point to the second. Yeah. Actually, I got it right. I got it right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can see where where your site was. Did I hear? You got these kind of cells in there. <laughs> is a giant cell tumor appendage sheet? You not only get a point for giant cell tumor appendage <coughs> sheet, but you get a, a jeopardy point for <laughs> 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 yes. So um, we have osteoclast like multinucleated giant cell on a fibrous background with plump gray fibrocytes. Well done. Are we getting minus points if we get it wrong? No. Okay. Um, yeah. Really yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have a? It's <laughs> Okay. Okay. So we're not keeping score, but they're winning. <laughs> I'm not sure I heard. Vasculitis. Oh, vasculitis. Um, do you see much in the way of of inflammatory cells, or is it more a proliferation? So it looks kind of KS-like, right? Is it a But when you look at the surrounding vessels, what made you think of vasculitis is the vessels definitely mm -hmm. looks like there's reactive change in the mm -hmm. vessels, right? So what would look kind of like KS, but deep, but definitely has reactive change in the vessels, and you're just seeing one little hobnail ectatic. Uh-oh. Oh, no. oh, yeah. uh -oh. <laughs> We're all getting shots. <laughs> <laughs> Targetoid, hemosiderotic, <laughs> comangioma. We are dead. <laughs> Tough. Should die. That was a tough, <laughs> tough because you don't see the much of the lymphangioma-like pattern high in that particular yeah. one. Poroma. Yeah. Proliferating pilar cyst. Nice. I also heard poroma. There, there actually is a lot of overlap histologically. You can see duct-like differentiation in the wall, which you'll often get in proliferating pilar cysts. This one looks like it's sweat filled. So, and it connects to the surface. So, Paroma is probably where I would go with it. 
whoever contributed it called it a proliferating pile mm. cysts. But, <laughs> but there is a lot, you know, histologically, Die. it can sometimes be uh, more difficult than you would think, this particular two. Acquired digital fiber keratoma. So acquired digital fiber keratoma. Um, sure I see nerves. Um, usually that is a little bit less cellular. It's about the cellularity of a dermatofibroma. This is very cellular and kind of amphiphilic mixoid. So do you know any kind of superficial acral fibromyxoma? <laughs> I yeah. didn't, but now I do. Yeah, superficial <laughs> acral fibromyxoma, <laughs> um, which is the other name is digital fibromyxoma, which is what they call it. I hear murmuring. <laughs> <coughs> Is it like this? So, again, Jeopardy style. <laughs> um, given the, the patchy perivascular and something at the interface, that's not an unreasonable thought, connective tissue disease. Right. Um, history on this one was drug. Mm -hmm. uh, um, you know, if you have mixed patterns of inflammation, you certainly want to think of drug. I certainly don't see... You know, there's a bare minimum of interface. I don't see a lot of sponge with it. I don't see granuloma with it or vasculitis. Um, the tight perivascular lymphoid, you might go with an erythema group reaction, like a gyrate erythema is the other name for, for that. So, but you were definitely in the ballpark. Okay, type it. <laughs> yep, it is micronodular. So it's not all contained within mixoid stroma. There is sclerotic <coughs> dermal collagen in between those little islands that are worming their way into the dermis, so you can't define that with a curette. So that's a, a true micronodular. I heard Seb. Anything else? Hypergranulosis, 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 all in the center. Okay. It's early keratoacanthoma starting to open up. Unhappy fat. Unhappy fat. <laughs> <coughs> so it's lobular, there's mm -hmm. definitely necrosis of the lobule. Tell me about the vascular pattern above. Yeah, probably on the shin with nodular angioplasia. Fat necrosis, nodular angioplasia, a little bit of lipomembranous change. Lip Lipodermatosclerosis, correct. I think I heard that simultaneously from the two teams. Thankfully, got it first. Yes, I'm sure that was the case. What is Klingons then? So, if there are Klingons underneath, then what are you thinking? You definitely see some acanthalysis, mm -hmm. right? So if they're Klingons, then you're thinking foliaceous. Mm -hmm. um, so that absolutely would be possible. What else, given that a lot of these are neutrophils? So it could be just impetigenized yeah. foliaceous. <coughs> so bullous impetigo, which also causes an acantholytic split in the granular. 
And then the one other thing. Staff's called it skin. Staff's called it skin if it's broader, although that especially early on doesn't have the neutrophils because it's toxin mediated, mm -hmm. right? So staff's called it skin and foliaceous early on don't have neutrophils, but later when it becomes impetigenized, it does. And then the other one I'd add is IgA pemphigus, mm -hmm. which accounts for probably most, um, most Snedden Wilkinson. Yes, Tell me about the center of each of the islands. So, limbs and histiocytes. So, well done, cutaneous lymphadenoma. Mm -hmm. You're used to seeing more of the dermal component. This is just the top shaved off. You get the cracks like that. Um, you, it's really, it's infundibular okay. change. So infundibulum versus duct is going to look kind of similar. Okay. Yep, I heard it on I heard it on both sides. Um, so pleva, given the fact that your interface, you have a superficial and deep infiltrate, at least as deep as the biopsy goes. <coughs> Lots of red cell extravasation. So interface with red cell extravasation, um, you think of pigmenting purpura, and you also think of um, of pterysis lichenoides. In this case, you don't really have a dirty scale crust, um, but you are tending towards a lymph in every hole type of interface pattern. So, pterysis lichenoides would probably be top of your list. Some sort of tumor. So what do you think the structure <coughs> was? What kind of round thing like that do you pluck out of deep sub Q? A mat, maybe? Yeah. Met or even a lymph node. Mm -hmm. You know, it's hard to tell. You don't really see much of a capsule, <coughs> but there are vessels there and what looks like it may have been a septum, mm -hmm. suggesting it was maybe a node. So do you see any tumor left? Or do you s just see masses of melanin? So regressed, completely regressed melanoma, the kind of thing that we're seeing with PD-1 inhibitors now, where you have things that are still black, but when you take them out, there's no melanoma left. It's just the melanoma is all dead, and you just have the melanin left behind, which is you know pretty sweet if you're the patient. Right? Hydrocystoma or cystadenoma. <coughs> yeah, correct. Um, what if this were eyelid skin? It's probably headed its way towards endocrine mesa producing carcinoma of the eyelid. So there's papillodermal edema, but not a whole lot of neutrophils. You do have EOs. So do you see more spongiosis or more subepidermal edema and split? Split. So like a subepidermal split. 
Yeah, uh, BP, <coughs> pemphigoid, epidermal lysis bullosa acquisita, and um, bite, scabies, those were all things that could do it. And looks like they said this one was pemphigoid, not oh. AF. Stain. I'm not sure that's fair. And I can't even read what it says. Paroma. What about all the pigment? Yeah. Pigmented paromas occur, especially in darker skinned patients. Paromas are often pigmented. So I heard, I heard malignant. There's certainly lots of metastases, or lots of mitoses, pleomorphism, hyperchromasia. Does it palisade at all? No. Doesn't palisade <coughs> at all, which is a little bit against sebaceous, right? Sebaceous things tend to palisade like pilar things palisade. So porocarcinoma carcinoma would be right up there. So a uh, poorly differentiated squame or an adnexal <coughs> squamous cell carcinoma, like a poro carcinoma, would be high up there um, with the lack of palisading. Skinny person. Yeah, a small, warm-like human being. <laughs> Or something like an accessory tragus, <laughs> right? <laughs> with a polypoid lesion with fat and lots of tiny little small hairs. I think we're running about neck and neck right now. <laughs> yeah. I actually heard it from Faliang first, so the, the point Yay. goes to the second year team. <laughs> um, epidermolytic hyperkeratosis. Now, it's a little bit crateriform, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So probably a solitary epidermolytic acanthoma. So where do 99% of those occur? Genitalia. Genitalia. Mm -hmm. Right there. Patients and often the physician thinks that they're condyloma. Mm -hmm. Mucinous carcinoma. Mucinous carcinoma. Mm -hmm. Blue islands floating in a sea of snot, mm -hmm. right? Pure poetry. <laughs> <laughs> Stains are well faded. Yeah. Pink strands, blue buds, um, infundibular cystic basal cell carcinoma. Spindle cell? Yep, spindle cell what? Lipoma. Spindle cell lipoma. So ropey collagen, fat, mixoid tissue, spindle cell lipoma. <coughs> so where do you think you are first off? Lots of smooth muscle. Lots of smooth muscle. Smooth muscle So so breast or or in a genital area, and then yep, you definitely have Paget cells up in the epidermis.
as well. Vessel. So, traumatized vessel is a good thought. The other thing that it could be, yep, yeah, exactly, synovial metaplasia. Mm -hmm. So, metaplastic synovial cysts, digital mucus cysts look like that. Ganglion cysts look like that, metaplastic synovial what's the, cysts. What's a metaplastic synovial cyst look like? Yeah. Um, <laughs> like this? Uh, clinically. <laughs> <laughs> Funny you should ask. Uh, <laughs> it's at a site of trauma, and it's just kind of a, a serous fluid-filled cyst. Over, over a joint space? Um, no, it can be anywhere. Hmm. Anywhere where you had a uh, resolving hematoma, basically. So very lobular, right? So it definitely looks like a pyogenic granuloma. And this was HHV8 positive. Mm. It's a lobular KS really looking like a pyogenic granuloma, right? Back during the AIDS epidemic, you would see um, KS mimicking um, benign angiomas, all sorts of things, and you only knew because they were eruptive, and then later you could stain them. Yeah, focal cutaneous mucinosis. And I was going to make up that this patient had multiple wound levi and endocrinopathy. Sorry. So, Carney syndrome. Predicted what you're going to say. <laughs> Which was very good. Do you do the stock mark? <laughs> <laughs> I try. I lose money. <laughs> this game. Yeah. So you definitely have, and so what's that? Yeah. Scabies poop. Um, so, scabies. Very good. What are all of these Dead. round red Sorry. things? And are they in the epidermis or are they down in the dermis? dermis. So is that more a TEN pattern mm. or more a lichenoid pattern? Lichenoid. Lichenoid. So you got a dense lichenoid <laughs> band. Like GVH or something. Does the horn look like GVH? No. What has that kind of thick lamellar horn? Thick No. Mm -hmm. I think I heard you. Seb. Yeah, Seb. Right? Uh, it's probably a lichenoid Seb. Uh -huh. Someone's <coughs> caught on that. So the, you know, the horn tells you what was there before mm -hmm. all hell broke loose with the lichenoid inflammation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so certainly acantholytic dyskeratosis, and then depending on history, Derriers, um, Grovers, mm -hmm. or Woody dyskeratoma. This was a solitary lesion rule out BCC, so probably a Woody D. Is it invasive? Okay. Glassy, disordered, hypergranulosis, full thickness, no invasion. Yep, I heard Bowen's. YMF. Uh, there's a lot of epidermotropism. Line up to DJ. So I heard epidermotropism lining up at the DEJ. 
bear Papillodermal the fibrosis, bare underbelly to the vessels. Yeah. You know, that's a really nice bare underbelly sign, right? So you are correct, mycosis fungoides. Well done. Nice. Epiderma dysplasia <laughs> verusiformis. Everyone see you have coilocytes, you have a flat wart like coarse basket weave, you have the blue foamy cells. That was easy. <laughs> <laughs> So, lupus would absolutely be a thought when you look, lots of EOs, mm -hmm. right, <coughs> endothelial reactions, so bite would be a very reasonable thought. See the pus mm -hmm. around something there? So what would cause deep pus around an epithelial structure? Folliculitis. Folliculitis, and then what kind of kinds of folliculitis have lots of EOs? So eosinophil folliculitis is one, but does that tend to have lots of neutrophils? So which, <coughs> what's suppurative folliculitis with EOs? HIV. So you can see it in HIV. What else? Folliculitis de Calvin's can show it. And the other one is fungal folliculitis. Ooh. Fungi love to do EOs in with the neutrophils. So that one was on deeper sections, Mayakis. Hmm. Um, but it's, uh, um, I think, reasonable <coughs> still to have in the differential, just you've got deep suppurative process that's obviously a folliculitis with EOs. You need to think of HIV, folliculitis to Calvin's, Miyake's, and then the clinical will probably tell you which of the three. It probably is a clear cell acanthoma. <laughs> you have not an abrupt cutoff, but you have pale cells. I don't see much atypia. There are neutrophils throughout and across. <laughs> well done. So I heard Wardy D. You sticking with that? Why do you have oh, EDV again? So, EDV or EHK? EHK. <laughs> see, how the, <laughs> see how the granules are very irregular and chunky, both red and blue? That's epidermolytic hyperkeratosis. So, it's the same one. <laughs> it's actually not the same one, they just all look pretty much the same. <laughs> Yeah, with the the sebaceous induction, if that's really induction, might make you think DF. Do you really have acanthosis, though? Oh, no. Not really. You have something spindly. And do you see how they look kind of onion skin? Starts with something in the center and then it's an onion skin. So what kind of fibrous things are onion skin like that? Mm -hmm. So, erythema elevatum diudinum, but do you see any neutrophils or neutrophil fragments? Mm -hmm. 
So other things you'd have to think of. Um, what if it were EMA positive? Perineuroma. Yeah, sclerosing perineuroma is mm -hmm. probably, and apparently was EMA positive. So. Margination, molding, and multinucleation of nuclei, so herpes. I heard ducts, I heard mucin. Weird paroma. Weird paroma. This is an eyelid. Endocrine mucin producing carcinoma. And this one's actually at the stage where it's mucin producing, right? <laughs> so it starts in the wall of a hydrocystoma, starts to become complex, looks kind of like a cyst adenoma, then it becomes more solid, almost like a basal cell, but with no palisade. And then it starts to produce mucin, and then it ends up as mucin, you know, run of the mill mucinous carcinoma. So it begins its life as a hydrocystoma, ends as mucinous carcinoma. Lupus, gyrated. So lupus and gyrated erythema. This one has some interface dermatitis. So which of the two is it more likely? Um, but the patient has a heliotrope. So anytime you say lupus histologically, it could be DM as well. You sticking with that? No. Pushing to spleen. So, yeah, it looks like a squamous cell carcinoma to me. Yeah. Probably arising mm -hmm. in bones. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, it actually is a shelled out BCC. <laughs> See the bits of palisading at the edge? That could help you. So that's skin, and then you go all the way down deep. Those kinds of cells, lots of extravasated red cells, kind of tissue culture looking fibroblast, edema, myxoid, lots of extravasated reds, tissue culture fibroblasts. And what about all these cells in there? Look almost like ganglion cells. Yeah, and what's it called? That's proliferative fasci. Mm -hmm. So proliferative fasciitis is like nodular fasciitis, <laughs> but it traps more collagen, goes much deeper, more infiltrative pattern, and has ganglion cells. Pagetoid scatter, pagetoid scatter of what? 
spitting out some yeah. already PD portions. Yeah, spitting out, crushing the basal layer, so pegetoid scatter of pegetoid. <laughs> <laughs> Aroma, a little bit slow, but accurate. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's see. That was 50. Good. Not bad. We got about 10 more minutes. 25 to 25. We should be able to do the other 50. <laughs> yep, let's do it. Kind of stroma. So it looks like paroma stroma. <coughs> what do you think about nuclear cytoplasmic ratio? It's a little blue. Right. <laughs> so probably poor carcinoma. How about this? Dermal duct. Like a dermal duct tumor with paroma stroma right there smaller islands in the dermis, so more like a dermal duct tumor pattern of acrospiroma. Pulsimpetigo. Okay, pulsimpetigo, what else? PF. So foliaceous, IgA pemphigus, you got them all this time. You're sure. <laughs> Your short-term memory is intact. <laughs> you are trainable. <laughs> okay. You would have just got up and walked out. Maybe a trichoblast. Yeah. So trichoep, trichoblastoma, concentric fibroblast root stroma, papillary mesenchymal body. Apparently the residents in Texas think my spirit animal is the papillary mesenchymal body. Yeah, <laughs> 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 it's appropriate. Yeah, apparently I do. So. <laughs> okay, so what do you think here? <laughs> yeah. So you have widening of the septum with granuloma. You have some little cloughs in the granuloma, little Misha granuloma. So even at scanning power, erythematosum. any inclusions and those would usually be crisscross to the surface right how would you describe this pattern is that like pinwheel or herringbone well herringbone is inner is long fascicles um, at 45 degree angle to one another or this is more storiform, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. More woven storiform. Mm -hmm. What do you know that storiform that can go mixoid? DFSP. Yeah, mixoid DFSP. Mm -hmm. Well done. I believe the um, second years are a little bit in the blue. Polymetric <laughs> <laughs> Yep. So very good. Why is it a cystic pan folliculoma? I see different 
differentiation of the hair. So you have differentiation towards all different parts of the hair follicle. You even have some trichohyalin over here. Um, you have areas that look um, like germinative epithelium, almost like what you would see in pilometricoma baseloid. You have a pilar type stroma surrounding it. So cystic pan folliculoma, very good. So you have clear swollen cells. Is it the upper third of the epidermis in a band like fashion or is it just spotty? Kind of spotty. And it looks like the lesion was a skin tag, right? So what's it called when you get that? So clear cell papulosis um, is actually a good thought, um, but these are just sort of swollen ballooning degeneration in the keratinocytes. It's what's called pagetoid dyskeratosis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The other one. It's <laughs> benign. It's benign. It's harmless. Mm -hmm. You see it a lot in tags and nevi, things that stick out and get rubbed. What's the shape of the lesion? <laughs> I heard the shape of the lesion was <laughs> which is basically <laughs> right. right? <laughs> it's round to oval with a capsule and a crescent-like zone of subcapsular edema. <laughs> so you're right, the shape of the lesion is Schwannoma. <laughs> okay. Paroma. Paroma, very good. No palisade, you can see ducts hangs down from the epidermis. Are we on skin or mucosa? Mucosa. And then what's all this stuff in there? It's a lymph, right? Mucosil. Mucosil. Remember on mucosa. So mucosil granuloma line cystic space. Is there a facement of the epidermis? No. What is it probably? Yeah. Dermatofibroma. Mm -hmm. Name three yeah. things mm -hmm. that give acanthosis like that. <laughs> so granular cell tumor, um, spits, and DF, and which one has brown pigment in it? Yeah. Dermatofibroma, hemocytorin. So big time papillary dermal edema, so if the infiltrate were predominantly lymphoid, you'd think of polymorphous light. What if it were an acral site? Similar perniosis. What if it were neutrophilic? Sweets like pattern, bowel bypass, GCSF. Of them, which one has? <coughs> yeah, nudes para, nudes para, <coughs> the psoriasis. <coughs> Name three brown pigments in skin. <laughs> Melanin liposuction, hemosiderin. Which one is this? Does it twinkle at all? No. Not really. Right. So that's all melanin. Mm -hmm. How likely is it that this came from something inflammatory? Not likely. So this is tumoral melanosis, which is regressed melanoma. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
minutes. Now we have, we have eight minutes left. Eight minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay, and counting. Okay, that's what you get. So glomus is a thought. Um, the cells are awfully clear, pale, right? And it's a cystic thing. Does it palisade at all? No. No. So what doesn't palisade becomes cystic and has clear cells? Yeah, clear cell hydrodenoma. Yeah, I think that's normal dermis. <coughs> Let's look a little closer and see. See the little bits of pigment down here? What are they? Yeah, exactly. So a macular or like an amyloid where you have little pink chunks with melanin outlining them. So what do you see? Follicular plugging. Follicular plugging. What else do you see? Sunness. Um, yes. Yep, I think I heard it. So pigment incontinence, what's all that pink stuff? So you've got vacuolar interface, follicular plugging, pigment incontinence, base membrane zone thickening, lupus, discoid lupus with just really prominent carpet tacking. What kind of giant cell? Yeah, so what is this? Early xanthogranuloma. Well, DF would be another thought, but does it have acanthosis or does it have effacement? Effacement. And then right at the periphery is where you're starting to get wreath giant cells. Great. So xanthogranuloma. <coughs> Muscum bodies in there, mm -hmm. so very inflamed, but it's a uh, inflamed molluscum. I think we got to stop right there. Okay, well done. You did about seventy-five. Thank you.